Hi guys, today we are starting a new uh, series of videos where we're going to make a modular film scoring template in Cubase. So creating a template in Cubase is super uh, time consuming, first of all, and it's uh, tricky and uh, uh, you kind of need to do it a couple of times before it clicks. Uh, and so I've done it a couple of times, learned from uh, using uh, my earlier templates. And uh, so I wanted to take you guys with me on a journey uh, on creating uh, another one. Uh, but hey, if we haven't met yet, my name is Tobud and I run this channel called Sifter Studios. On here we do film scoring tutorials, tips and tricks, and also uh, some productivity talks once in a while. So if that sounds interesting, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. So we're going to start creating a modular template. And by that, I mean, it will be exchangeable. It can turn into whatever you want, uh, but it will still have a lot of the uh, routing and capabilities of a more fleshed out template. Uh, what that means for you guys is that uh, you can replace uh, the instruments with your own. And this will really easily give you a, a head start on building your own template. So after we're done, I'll make this available uh, for you to download for free. Uh, but if you want to create the template uh, and kind of learn as you go, uh, that's also a way to, to do it. So why would you actually need a template if you're working in film scoring or in media music in general? There's a couple of reasons. The biggest probably is uh, the amount of time you're saving when you don't have to do the same stuff all over again and you can spend as much time as possible on just creating music and not worry about all the routing for example and how you're going to export things and that's going to be the same from from queue to queue the other big reason would be consistency because if you're using uh, instruments from various companies uh, they're going to have some differences and if you're balancing the different strings from the different companies you have for example uh, then they're going to sound more like if they were played in the same room and they're going to sound more realistic. When we are working in a more modular way, uh, that aspect is going to not be there. You will have to uh, do it on the fly. However, that might be just what you want. So we're going to look at a lot of different things throughout uh, these videos uh, on how to create a template in Cubase and to have lots of notes that we're going to go through um, and we're just going to get started. But really quickly, I wanted to just show uh, what my current template looks like. And uh, I'm going to show you some of the things I'll incorporate into the template I'm creating for you guys. So here's my current template. It sits in around 2,400 tracks, has lots of different things. It's not completely done, uh, of course. <laughs> but uh, if we look at some of the strings here, I can really easily play them at once. And everything's mapped out in a really easy way. And uh, I've also got this hooked up to my iPad right here. And usually this works really easily. You can see that if I hit uh, Novo strings, it's going to pull up Novo strings. I hit Albion 4. It's going to hit uh, Albion 4. Or if I do Trailer Brass. So I have this really easy way of navigating and I have all of these other things set up. This is partly uh, custom and partly due to uh, a fellow composer called Jason Graves and his YouTube channel is full of uh, these nerdy things. Uh, so you should definitely check him out uh, for more info. Uh, his YouTube channel seems to be a little dormant right now, but there's lots of great info. And he also has a Patreon where you can uh, get access to some of the, the files so you save a little bit of time. So highly uh, recommended. What we're going to create uh, is going to be a little bit more simple. We're not going to have two and a half thousand tracks, uh, but we're going to create something modular that's going to work on a lot of different computer configurations. 
but at the same time, it's going to be solid and it's going to be well thought through and it's going to take uh, the mistakes that I've done earlier and kind of put them into a new template that you can use as a starting point for your sample libraries. So let's shut down this template and just start from scratch. All right, here we go. This is a completely empty template. And so what I'm going to do is create a lot of different sections. And uh, I've been looking at a couple of videos uh, comparing rack instruments to track instruments. For example, in Cubase, rack instrument would be if I created a instrument right here. Let's open up contact here as a rack instrument. And I would have to create a MIDI instrument for that to work. And it would create a lot of different tracks. Uh, I've done this in my main template because it works better uh, when using VSL and that whole different world of, of creating a template. I think for this thing, we're going to go for track instruments instead. And uh, the way to do that, just uh, if you're wondering how to get rid of a rack instrument, just hit the contact and then no VST instrument and it's gone. Okay. So creating a track instrument instead is super easy. Just add an instrument track contact. And there you go. Now, the next question is, would you want to add one contact instance per instrument? Or would you want to do something like uh, one contact instance, and then up to 16 MIDI tracks that sends their MIDI to that instance of contact, and then have either one or multiple outputs from that contact instance in your mixer. After searching a little bit and actually looking at some comparison videos, uh, it appears that the the difference is negligible. Ne Nudgeable, nudgeable, nudgeable. Uh, and so I'm actually gonna create one instance per instrument and test this out for myself. But if you wanted to do one instance and then 60 MIDI tracks, it's pretty easy. You could do um, save this as a track presets, for example. And I have one called TL MIDI 16. TL is my initials, by the way. And then it would create 16 MIDI tracks and one black track. And the way I used it in my main template was that I colored this like a spacer. And then I would assign all of these to the first contact instance. And then I could add 16 instruments here. And then I could do outputs from that if I wanted. However, we're not going to do that. We are instead creating a lot of contact instances. And the way we're going to do it is by uh, disabling them to make this easier. And then we're just going to duplicate. Right, so it doesn't need to. Uh, I've already created a, a lot of contact instances. With that said, um, structure wise, we're going to get back to the structure part later. Uh, but my philosophy is to kind of work on a, a larger scale, and then gradually bring the track count down through routing, so that I'm able to have full control over what goes into each stem. So that when I export things as stems, I'll have full control over what goes where. And that is a pretty common way to do uh, media music. Uh, almost always I'm required to send stuff off as stems. And stems, if you don't know, is a group of instruments sent into one uh, group track that you then export. So you could do one stem could be strings, one stem could be percussion, brass, and so on. The first thing I'm going to do is actually create some folders and I have a, a key command set up for that, which is shift space. Uh, and I'm probably going to change that into something else once I'm done with this template building, because it's a, a handy uh, key command to have. Um, but 
we could do uh we could do folder uh if we don't want it want it that way we could do a folder track and we could just say i want to create 20 folders like that and so now uh we could do strings brass woodwinds percussion and maybe would we would want a different one for drums, synths, keys, and sound design. Okay, that's eight tracks, and that's going to be what we work uh, from. So uh, let me delete all of these. Let me create one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and save that as a track preset. TL. Eight Ooh. contact disabled, and let's see if that works. It does, so it loads it in uh, disabled, which is super useful. Strings I am gonna create eight instances, and inside of strings, we're gonna do another folder. Now, I've kind of duplicated that whole thing, right? And I'm going to do first violin, second violin, violas, cello, and double bass. Inside here, I'm going to create uh, the same thing. And a little trick I, I do often once I rename something, I do a violin one or whatever I want to do is space. And then I copy that and I do next by hitting tab. And then I paste it, then I hit the number. Okay, so that's all of the strings uh, done. And we're going to do that for all of the different instruments uh, as well. And we're going to talk about routing and a lot of di different stuff. Let me just finish off uh, these guys and I'll get back to you.